Hi, I'm Amy Zanders. This is my second Pachacucha. It's amazing. I love it. I can't wait to see the rest of it. I'm here to support um, James Cooper and or also uh, Sherry Lynn. So it's going to be great. Good evening, everybody. I, this is a picture I made probably about six years ago, and it's, um, I was just dreaming about another island and whether, how different our lives would be if we actually had a close neighbor like that. And ironically or strangely, um, that's sort of come true for me in the last little while, and the way those islands have appeared to me is that I have um, started showing my work a lot outside of Bermuda, and a lot of times that's in group shows with other Caribbean artists, or more recently I've actually been showing a lot in, in the islands. And a very common theme amongst, uh, in, amongst contemporary artists in the Caribbean is this sense of like, creative isolation. And so what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit today is how um, that, that issue is kind of being addressed uh, around the world. This is a place in uh, Port of Spain, Trinidad. It's called Alice Yard. Um, as you can see, it's a tiny little place, but it's actually an incredibly influential place, both in Caribbean art and in um, the broader world. I'm supposed to look over there at that. Look at the audience. Hmm? Jesus. All right. <laughs> and um, these places, they function kind of on two levels. Um, there's a, a level that is, uh, it's, a, it's an obvious kind of social creative hub within that, own, that, in that community. But very importantly, they're also um, uh, platforms for international artists to show their work. And it's that bringing in of other talent and mixing it with the local population that, that's really driving contemporary art in the Caribbean. Now, I was invited to show there uh, in 2011. That's some guy putting up a picture of mine in the yard there. And um, it was, just to give you an example, like in that show, it was myself, an artist from uh, Trinidad, one from Jamaica, someone from the UK, and someone from Canada. So the, the, the net that they cast is, is really quite broad. Um, 20 seconds is a long time. Uh, this is a place, this is a uh, new local space in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, and you can see even smaller space, I mean, it's a fraction the size of this room, but it's, they're very ambitious spaces. Um, what they're trying to do is really push creativity and experimentation and drive uh, contemporary art forward. And the way they do that is, A, they identify artists that they think are doing in interesting things in the region and they bring them there. And they do things like 24-hour residencies, 48-hour residencies. They crowdsource money for people so you don't have to pay your own money. And it's really creating an energy around a space that allows you, and you know, they're not precious about their space. You got information draw it on the wall. You don't have to go get something printed out and stuff like that. Um, I actually didn't show there, but I showed under the umbrella of them in a show in Washington, D.C. that they organized. And it just shows you that, I mean, even though they're a little tiny space on the one little island, their outlook is very broad and their ambition is, is really, really broad. Um, so, yeah, I showed with them in D.C. last summer. Um, enjoy that slide for a little bit while I'm... <laughs> Uh, this is what it looks like. This is a liquor store in Nassau, Bahamas. It's got a great name and a cool color scheme. <laughs> but what's interesting, on the, on the right-hand side is their warehouse. And what happens in there is really interesting because uh, two or three times a year, all the product is moved out and it becomes a place to, sh uh, to show art. So when that, all of a sudden you have a very big space um, that no one's got any overhead to keep up for all year long that will accommodate large-scale sculptures and installations. Um, I was invited down there last April to do a work um, in something called Transforming Spaces, which is a Nassau-wide um, weekend, basically, of art. Um, and the idea they had, they said, oh, come down, we really like your work, but we want you to do a collaboration with two other artists from the Bahamas. I never met them before, but that's, it's that, that kind of energy and that um, support is really, as an artist, it's fantastic. So we started transforming that space. and. Um, <clears throat> Another thing I'll, I will say about these, these places is that they're, they're also really, really good at um, using the internet, social media. Like, they promote their shows really well. They archive their work. This is what we ended up doing. But the, the stuff in the middle, you know, it'll be there for three days. Maybe the stuff on the wall will last longer when they put the beer cases back in. It's not a big deal. But a lot of people, even if you don't go to that show, a lot of people will see the work that's done there because the networks of, that they have with vloggers, online magazines, print media, etc., etc. So. It, they're, they're very um, proactive and vital spaces. Uh, this is a place in Martinique I showed there in the, f in the fall. Um, another, like an old industrial area that they've converted into a gallery. And um, <clears throat> I, I think one of my point I'm trying to get across to you is, I think in Bermuda we tend to gravitate to really expensive, big ideas, when in fact that can really suck the life out of a lot of things. And uh, these kind of places are 
they're full of life and, and when you go there and you meet and, and the, the, a lot of the very interesting thing to me is the, is the meeting of, of other artists and it's a really if they can get the artists there it's really important I actually didn't go to Martinique but I would have liked to go there but it's this cross-pollination of ideas and the French Caribbean there's a weird uh, separation in the Caribbean like the French speaking islands the Spanish speaking islands and the English speaking islands they don't <clears throat> they don't really get together a lot and this gallery has been very good about reaching out across those, those barriers and trying to create a collective kind of energy in, in the Caribbean. That's some weird video I made, so I can't not really speak about that. <laughs> <laughs> but I've never made a video before. And this, we're gonna, this is a little different. This is um, Haiti. Um, this is an alley. This is here you're dealing with something totally different. This is no space whatsoever. I mean, this is, this is where the SARS community lives in, in um, the ghetto of Port-au-Prince, Port Haiti. Um, and you know, they put their art on the outside of their buildings, right? So, we, uh, but they also have an incredibly vital and vibrant um, international art event there. Um, we were lucky enough to get invited down there a couple of years ago. I went with a, two friends of mine from here. Um, and see, even where there's no space, they make space to show art. And it's, um, the, the, this event has some flaws, but it, the idea is sound in that you have to come there from, uh, and you're not allowed to bring any finished artwork with you. So you have to create stuff in Haiti. And so the idea is you meet artists on equal footing deal with the problems they have and you learn from them they learn from you this is one of two installations that we made there and it was it was a, it was an amazing experience it was um and really uh like i must have some other points i was gonna make but i can't remember what <laughs> i mean i can speak uh, uh, for this is uh, now we're in toronto this is my last one this is a, a, a show i was in last summer um it, it, of contemporary caribbean photographers and this, this is, they'd used four shipping containers that are put together. It's not that novel idea, but what's kind of interesting about it is where those containers were put, in that they were put in the courtyard of the, uh, the big contemporary art museum in, in Toronto, which is a power plant. And so it becomes a little bit of a symbiotic relationship there where the, you know, the, the, the museum's getting kind of whatever, the hip, trendy Caribbean-ness, and the show is getting the, the, the benefit of the institution like that. So my only real point is, um, I think Bermuda, we have kind of a strange relationship with the Caribbean. And just from my experience, there's a lot of really interesting, dynamic, and creative things going on there. And it might be worth people's while to check it out. Thank you, James. I love the idea of English, Caribbean, Spanish, and French Caribbean coming together to create art. The last slide, yeah. um, that structure, those um, containers, yeah. is that, was that a temporary um, setup as yeah. well? Yeah, it, it, it was temporary, but I don't actually know how they did it. They did, I, I, there's a company in Canada that does, they, they welded them together, so it was like a, you walk between them, I, I have no idea. But you don't know how long, for how long? I, it, was, it was there for, for months, but months. yeah, I'm sure it would last for a long time. But, the, I mean, things like that are not hard to do. I mean, the, the, I mean, we have containers all over the place, right? And it's... I feel like my talk wasn't funny enough. Like everyone else is... Like... You know, I was thinking that, too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Um, I really appreciate... Anyway, I thought it was great. My question is... Um, uh, we have a, yeah, we have a funny relationship with the Caribbean here, and, um, and there's certain uh, kind of narratives that we're fed. Um, and I'm wondering what you heard from locals down there, if they had any thoughts about Bermuda. They think it's boring, and um, they know about collie buds. That's about it. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> Hi. Hi, how you doing? I'm um, James. A lot of us have traveled. Right. And in various airports, the most welcoming thing I find is local art. When I arrive in certain airports, there's local art displayed. And it gives you a little sense and a touch of the people and the identity. How difficult is it here to get the government to allow you to display in government places? i.e. the airport and the welcoming centers for our visitors. Um, that doesn't really interest me at all, so I, I wouldn't really know, but the, the, the um, I, 
I think a lot of kind of what I'm trying to say too is like these like these these people that I'm interested in are people just taking control of their own lives. They're not like waiting for government to do something for them or saying, "Could you do it?" I I, I think I think it's like Adrian said. I think it's possible, but I, I don't know a whole lot about that really. I, I it's um I th and the art that I'm interested in too is is. Uh, a little too weird to go in the airport, I think, for most people. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else have a question? Sydney Constable. Yeah, here we go. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you had any like spaces or you know venues in mind that we could do something similar to what they're doing. Uh, in Jamaica. Um, I mean, I'm sure someone could do it. I, I'm, my personality is such that I would not be the one to do that, but the, I, I'm working on an idea that's more a temporary thing, and I, I just, because it is inspiring to go to these kind of places, and it takes a lot of work, though. I mean, the, the people that run these places, I mean, a lot of them are artists, or they've been involved in the art world in some degree, and, and basically what they, so, uh, a lot of the people, they would have had some sort of a fairly established art career somewhere else and come back home to where they're from and seen this kind of hole in, in, in what's going on in the art world there and, and tried to create these places. But they work very, very hard and it becomes a full-time job doing that. And, um, but sure, there's, I mean, you don't even need space, really. I mean, and there's a, it's not a girl who's doing something in Barbados that um, I didn't put on there, but she basically just you know, arranges art shows on the sidewalk and in parking lot. I mean, you don't actually need a space. If, you, if your desire is to do that, I mean, you can, you can do it, right? So. Theoretically. <laughs> All right, unfortunately, that's kind of the end of the night. Um, um, but we do want to thank a couple of people. Definitely want to thank Channel 82. Please give them a round of applause. There was a time where I would say, you know, just tune in, you'll see it, it'll be repeating in perpetuity, but <laughs> they got a lot of content, so uh, you'll have to pay attention and tune in because it ain't going to be up there forever. Um, I definitely want to thank uh, Aideen and Nikki and everybody who helped put this together and all of the presenters. Can you give a round of applause for the presenters? Next Pecha Kucha is going to be in May. We're not exactly sure where it's going to be, um, um, so stay tuned. However you found out about this is how you're going to find out about that. Hannah? What about Chew Stick? Yeah, we want to thank Chew Stick because they provided all of the... I wasn't done. <laughs> they provided all of the audio equipment tonight, so a round of applause for Chew Stick. And if you haven't seen the Mazumbo mural, go check that dear. Um, and lastly, but definitely not least, a big round of applause for Work Workmen's for hosting us tonight. I'm gonna go off script a little bit, but I would encourage you to encourage other people to come. Yeah? These, these are moments where we share with each other and it's really important that more of us come out to receive the messages that we have. Yeah? Okay, cool. Have a good night. Drive safe. Support the bar because the bar supports the vibe. <laughs>